Hello, this is Janet16 and welcome to part 5 of building the old gauge diorama. So today we are looking at one of my favourite parts of modelling and that is Plaster Paris. I've got a couple of sheets here on a plate. Um, this is actually an entire roll wall cut up into strips. The roll walls are from Jarvis, which you can buy. Other manufacturers like Model Scene and that, they also do their own kinds. But I've always used Jarvis, I always will. And you can also get a lot off eBay because they use a lot of plaster Paris for kids building in like primary schools and that. So you can pretty much get it in a lot of places. And Obicraft, I recommend as well. Obicraft do three kinds of it, I think. Modeling kind and then uh, other kinds of kids. But what we're going to focus on now is this front bit. I would do the back bit if there's time. So I've got the strips cut up here. Let me just bring the plate around. There you go. That's one roll wall cut up into strips. You also need water. Here's the water. And I'll show you what you've got to do. I uh, would we'll put that on the train track for now. And I'll show you how you pull it in the water. Doesn't matter if the water is cold or warm. This water is warm though, just because of my hands. I don't want to get really cold hands. And as I mentioned in part four, when we done this area here, um, I'm going to have to put more newspaper down as well. But we'll do that now because I won't glue the newspaper down because as soon as I put the um, plastic pass on top, it will hold it in place. So when I'll put the newspaper in place, um, it's actually going to be quite difficult to do this. I think because of the way I want the um, bed of the, you know, the uh, ditch I'm going to be building. So let's start. Um, I'm going to put that one strip aside at the moment because it's a bit big and I'll use that later on. So you've got the strip of plaster Paris, put it in the water, just dunk it down, get it in there. Don't have to hold it in there. As soon as it's wet, let it drip out so you don't trail water everywhere. And what we've got to do is place that like that. Now, it's going to overhang the board here. I will deal with that after. That is not a problem for now. And there we go. It looks quite messy at the moment. But like I said, the newspaper gets wet. You can wet the newspaper if you want. Now, I'll put it down. Um, there you go. I haven't done plaster pads for a long time. Probably a year and a half now. So got to get back into it but like I said it's my favorite part of modeling I really do enjoy this part a lot of people don't like it I don't know why <laughs> I've always um, enjoyed this side of modeling so there we go and we'll have a brush later on as well and I'll show you how to help when you brush it so you do a couple across here now this ditch area this bit's still too high and I want to sort that out. So sorry if I hit the camera there. But like I said, it will go wet and it will go down. I might have to help it a bit. And there we go. And this got to be a nice smooth U shape. So I got to make sure it's completely watertight because when we put the liquid in there, which I'll be showing you a video on that, what makes the water. Um, it tends if there's an O or gap, it'll bubble up, and that's a problem I had with my last one of my last layouts I done. The well, last time I used that water. So what I'm gonna do now is hopefully get that to go like that. So there's the ditch. That is the basic shape of it done now. I will do close-up pictures after at the end of the video, like I did with the last video part four. And this is actually going really well at the moment. It's it's an easy job. You can do it well or you can do it bad. Um, but if you're a younger modeler, um, someone who's starting out with model railways, I would just uh, say um, probably have someone helping you with it. Just someone who's already done it. If not, just take your time with it. You can't really go that wrong with it. It's only Plast Paris. Um, and if stuff does go wrong, 
you can always just wet it and start well move it around a bit um, which I'll be showing you a way what I do after um, just to sort things out tidy it up a bit and I'm getting the table a bit wet here but it's alright it is water after all it won't damage the table in any way and as you can see doing this where I put newspaper underneath it's not level which is exactly how I wanted the ground I did I wanted it level of course but I didn't want it I wanted it quite bumpy because it's going to be quite a bumpy area and it's just a side in British Rail would have made just not putting much work into it make sure it's flat so they can just put a track down really let's just move that glue bottle right in the way there we go and yep it's going well so far I will have to put another piece of newspaper down now with the pipe I'm gonna have to mold it around the pipe now as you can see it's quite close to the track here that's not a problem um, the ballast will take care of that and the ballasting I'm looking forward to doing that I've never ballast old gauge track so that should be good just use your finger on the joints like that just rub over the joints and it should bring it together a bit more there we go and now this is going to be for the bottom of the ditch I've got to try and get it underneath that pipe um, I'm not worried about getting it on the pipe for now because the pipe's going to be sprayed anyway but we do have to do something with the bottom of the uh, ditch in a minute now this newspaper I had here left over let's just cut it down a bit there we go and there we are I'm hoping you see that over here there we go yep yeah. make sure the camera's okay um, I think the battery's not that great on it actually but it should be alright for this video and there we go and yeah it's going well now I did mention with the um, ditch I would be putting a bridge in and a little bit of a wooden retaining wall and that's purely for display that won't help with the water um, just to give uh, the ditch some texture now that piece of wood I put in earlier that's covered up I'm covering that up because you can still build on top beans as a flat surface well I'm hoping that I just hold that down a little bit this last bit of newspaper we're just going to put the back here the ditch isn't really going to go anywhere it's just a place for the water to go um, so it is just going to be a ditch of water really it's not going anywhere it's just to old water from when it rains from the streets level now we've got a bit close to the track so we'll have to move that down there we go so the ditch will need several layers of this plaster Paris and I will be doing that now it's just so when we put the water in really for those of you who've never used plaster Paris it's not the it's not watertight because it is just plaster afterwards cloth with plaster on and what I will have to do is put something in the bottom of the river now last time I done it the water I'm using is plastic it's like little plastic beads and um, they melt up and you pour it in and they once they cool down they go soft uh, go hard and that's what makes your water and it's like clear water so that does mean I would have to detail the bottom of the ditch with you know like some color and that make it look really dirty which I'm looking forward to doing Look forward to that. So we're going to have to sort this pipe up now as well. Also, you notice where I cut the polystyrene, what the track's on. That's worked out really well. Gave it a bit of an edge. Um, I'm not sure how deep the water is going to be in the ditch. It's not going to be as high as the pipe, I don't think, um, because I want to have the pipe on show. Now, oh my God, I'm probably going to have to double this one up. And there we go. 
Now, like I said, I will be going over this in a minute with a little bit of a technique. I have. So I just got to make sure it's really um, smooth on the edges. Now we're going to finish this area where the shed's going to be. Just to uh, get that sorted, make it a little bit tidier. There we go. And yeah, that's looking good. Now, where the back walls are going to be, I put the pieces of wood in. Um, I'm probably going to go over that just to help with the um, when we uh, do the gravel and that and the scenery side of things. There we go. And yeah, that's looking really good. Now we do be on the buffers. I'll just move this so you can see a bit more. Don't worry if you get any water on the track. Um, this track's made for outdoors anyway. That's folded on the corner of that piece, but that's okay. Um, you probably just hear a plane go over or a helicopter or something. I know I heard that. <laughs> there we go. I will try and not get it on the back bits where the retaining wall is going to go. Just because it might cause a few complete, uh, complications later on. But there we go. That's looking good. Now it's quite bumpy at the back. But the more I put down it should help. Also with this warm water I'm using. Um, my hands are not cold at all. So I do recommend warm water. And there we go. Yeah, it's looking good now. Now, I'm going to have to move this water to a side, so you won't see me no more putting the cloth in the water, but I've got to do this back bit. So I'm just going to move the canvas slightly. Bear with me. Whoops. There we go. And we'll do this back bit. We will return to the front bit in a minute. I've done all this over... I think it's two days now, and I haven't rushed it. I've took my time. I you probably think I'm um, bodging a lot of it with like the pipe and that. Whoops! You push the frame off then. Um, but that's that's how I build things. So I've always been like that, just using what I got. Because why go and buy a piece of pipe when you got something like a pipe around here? And that's what I done. I used some leftover copper pipe from when we worked on the house. There we go. Again, it don't matter getting too close to the trap because the ballast will cover up anyway. And you won't see none of this white. Um, I will be spraying it for an undercoat. And that piece just fold over there. Um, I'm going to bring this one over here. I'm going to have to fold it slightly. There we go, that's looking all right. We're into 13 minutes, I think, 13 something. And we don't have far to go now. We've nearly done it. There we go. So, that's more or less it. There's a bit of gap over here. Um, I haven't got scissors with me, but I would cut it. Um, I'm just going to grab my little brush. Um... with me and I'm back just had to grab some stuff at the train run um, so I've got paint brush here I'll show you what that's for in a second but I'm just going to cut some of this cloth to fill in that area behind the buffer If you have any requests to see certain ideas, certain stuff, please let me know. I might not be using it on this, but there still might be little things I can show you on the layout, on the diorama. So I'm just going to sort this bit out underneath the pipe. Because again, when we put the water in, you can't really afford to have that many gaps. So I've got to make sure it's quite watertight. 
and it will be in a second. You might have to use a tweezers. Um, I will have to use a tweezers just because that's on the pipe there. Just to get underneath the pipe, there we go. And I really do like how this ditch is already looking. There we go. And that's good. So I've got to put a couple of cloth pieces now. Well, I do want to put one over there one second. Um, just to finish that area off by the train track. Over this far side. So the ground's not completely flat over here, which is great. And that's exactly how I want it. I still got a bit beyond the buffers. Make sure I can sort out now. There we go. And it's a long video. <laughs> it's going on a bit. And we're only doing one thing in this video, but it does take time. Can't rush it. I'm not rushing it. Um, I'm taking my time with it. And that's what modeling's all about. You can't rush stuff because in, I don't know, nine times out of ten, it won't look properly. It won't look right. There'll be something wrong with it. You'd miss some that. And that's something I found with when I build the Lego stuff. Um, I do usually rush some of it, just kind of want to see how it looks. So what we're going to do now is just put a bit more in the ditch. And I've gone over the pipe, but don't worry, that's going underneath the pipe. I think the ditch scene is going to be the highlight of the model. This is already hard, by the way. This has gone hard now. And to finish this off... I will put one more in. I notice the battery's getting quite low on the camera. So if it does go, I'll have to charge it and uh, sort the last bit out. But that's it now. That's everything in. So with the paintbrush, get your water, which is over here. And what I'm going to do is get the water like I'm painting it. And the reason I'm doing that is because it smooths it all out. So when I come to paint it, um, it won't look all blodgy in that. Whoops. I'm still lifting some of that. That's a problem. <laughs> uh, we can flatten that. That's not ideal, but that moved then. So what happened is it moved the cloth. Um, it still is a bit. That's because of the water and that. But I'll do it slowly. I probably could have done with a smaller brush, actually. Um, I do usually use a smaller brush. So there we go. Let's make sure the camera's all right. Now, what I've got to do, means that moved, is put another piece in. Smooth it with your fingers. It's quite a messy job, uh, but I don't mind it. Usually, if you get uh, dirty fingers from doing something, that's usually you've done a good job of it. Uh, right, there we go. Now that is perfect. That is exactly how I wanted it. So I'm going to smooth over a bit more water, but that is basically it for this video. Um, this episode, more like. It's gone really well. Just make sure the pipe's nice and, like I said, when we come to put water in here, it'd be a long way from now, I think, because I don't want to do scenery in that first, and track weather and stuff like that. But that is it for this video. Just make sure everything's A-OK -okay at the back here. 
Uh, sorry about that. The uh, camera come to the end of its 20 minutes. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And part six will be with you soon. Bye for now. Okay, I'm back. Um, before I ended the video, I forgot to say about drying. Um, this stuff will dry on its own in a nice warm environment. But if you want to speed up the process, I I used to use an air dryer because I was in a shed that was quite cold. Um, it took longer. So I used to use a, just a normal air dryer on it to dry it all up. And that will speed the process up. I don't need to because I'm building this in the house. This will be dry five hours. But I would suggest leaving it overnight before you do anything else to it. So thanks for watching again. And bye. And episode 5 will be really soon. Bye for now.